What's going on guys? I'm Frank with Ratchet and Frank TV. Today I'm going to be showing you how to bring life to these speakers that we mounted up yesterday. It's my duty to tell you that electricity is very dangerous. So if you don't know what you're doing, needless to say, do not try this at home. Anytime we're working with electricity, we want to kill the lines so that no power is running to them. Now, the way to do this is usually there's a breaker above your box or there's a breaker inside of it that you could switch it off. Now, this is a sub panel itself. So the circuit breaker for this is actually located in a separate part of the house on the main line. So I went ahead and I just shut that off. Now it's safe to go ahead and open it up. And with all my breakers in the off position, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the screws that hold the plate on it. What's important to understand what we're looking at here. This is our neutral bar. This is our grounding bar, easily identified by all the copper wires going to it. This is our line A and B, was supplying the actual power to the house. So what we wanna do now is we wanna take our multimeter, we wanna change it to the appropriate range and setting, alternating card, and we wanna test to see if there's any standing voltage. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna place our positive probe on our line B and our negative probe on our line A. Now my multimeter should read zero voltage or 0 0.01, very close to little. I also, want to go ahead and take my positive probe, place it on the hot side of one of my, on the hot screw of one of my circuit breakers. And then we want to go ahead and place it on the ground bar. Again, checking for standing voltage. A little bit better of a view on how to do this. This top breaker is controlling the quad box under my desk. This breaker is controlling the press table, controlling all the machinery over there. Now, again, we're going to take our positive probe and place it on the screw that the hot wire is connecting to the breaker with, and take our negative probe and place it on the grounding bar. Now it should read very low voltage, 0.01 or 0, 0.00. This indicates that there is no standing voltage in the system and the power to the box has been cut. So now we know that the box is safe to work on and our lines are safe to work on. The only thing I went ahead and did since you guys last saw this is I hung some TRS cable from the BX conduit above it. Now. What we have to figure out is how we're gonna power these. I think it would be really cool if we had a switch mounted right on the wall to turn the entire media system on in one go. In order to do that, we have to direct wire the speakers into the BX conduit above it. Now that isn't difficult to do, however, we have to make cables that will go into the back of the speakers as well as outlets. Now sometime in the nearby future, I'll make a video going into depth, covering the fundamentals of basic electricity. But for now, I'm going to assume that you understand the basics of electricity and how things work. So this is a C14 connector. This first pin right here is hot, this middle pin is ground, and this pin over on the right is your line. Now if we flip this cable over and if we look on the shielding, we could see that it's 3C slash 18AWG. Now what that means is that there's three connectors and it's an 18 gauge wire. Now the three connectors are your hot, your neutral, and your ground. Pretty simple. So in reality, we could use the entirety of the cable up until the plug. So let's go ahead and strip it right at the plug. Shielded, I mean it's wrapped in this steel jacket. Now we're gonna check for continuity between the end of the cable and the C14 connector to determine what is what. Now remember what I said, this is the hot pin, this is the ground pin, and this is the line pin. For continuity, is we're just gonna go ahead and turn our multimeter to the, to the noise looking guy over here. We're gonna assure that it's on the ohm setting over here. So we'll go to green here. Now typically green indicates ground, so that's what we're gonna try first. So, yep, so green is ground right in the middle. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check the hot. Cool, yep, hot is left. So we'll go again, our positive to our line, then our negative inside the line. Okay. And there we go, cool, awesome. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna use this two conductor wire. They commonly sell this for lamp cables and stuff like that. Now, if you're gonna do this, you have to make sure that the wire inside of the cable is rated the same as the uh, wire you're gonna use. So this is rated for 300 volts, as is the wire in the cable. 
We're gonna use this wire. This is some more, just some standard 18 gauge wire for the grounding wire. So we're gonna use a little bit of heat shrink, of course. Um, we're gonna use our solder gun and some flux. So I already had, went ahead and uh, applied some flux on these. So let's just tin them up real quick. Remember when we're soldering, we're heating the wire and applying the solder to the wire, a hot wire and melting it on the wire. We're not applying the solder directly to the tip of the solder gun. When you're doing something like this, specifically changing the color of existing wires, it's important that you take note of exactly what you're doing just in case somebody else has to work on this at any point. Also, it's a costly mistake to have to go back and redo something because you took poor wire management. You should notice that I'm soldering the wires side by side. I'm doing this in order to ensure that the wires have a smooth connection and that they will not rip the heat shrink when I snake them through the conduit. This is extremely dangerous, so you need to make sure that you do this right. So I decided that I'm gonna run a piece of BX conduit from this junction box right here to the back of the speaker where I could then lead the wire directly through the BX all the way to our new junction box we'll be installing down low. Same concept on the other side, except I'm gonna use this big junction box and a piece of BX conduit to the back of the speaker My electric people, you definitely see the tool that I'm using right now, but that white stuff in my hand is called fish tape. This stuff is super, super helpful when sending wire through conduit. It makes it a hell of a lot easier and saves a whole lot of time. So now that we have our BX with the cable inside going to the back of the speakers and our two custom cables that we made here meeting in the middle with our J-Box mounted, the BX conduit ready for it, and our other BX wrapping into our main J-Box. We're now ready to tie this into our system. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a piece of Romex that I have. I believe this is 12-3. That means it's 12 gauge wire with three connectors on it. We're gonna tie it into the light system at this J box right here. And then we're gonna run it through here and we're gonna tie them into a switch together. These junction boxes get very tight very fast. A good trick is to use a pair of pliers and to kind of push the wires into the position that you'd like. Now you have to be very careful as to not ruin the covering of the wire or the short that way. Let's go ahead and connect our two black striped lines with the third that we just made in our hand. Setting up these two-way switches is super simple. All you have to do is connect one hot wire from your power source to the bottom terminal of the switch, then the other hot wire from your load to the top terminal. Next, connect your neutral wires and you're done. We are just about nearing the end of this, so let's go ahead and take this for a test ride down Sunset Drive. We can see our switch. The orange light in it is indicating that it's working. Flip this switch, the speakers will go off, and when we flip them, the speakers will turn back on. Mm -hmm.